Greetings everyone and welcome back to Expeditions of Viking, one of my unfinished series which we have returned to by grace of the extremely generous support that I have received on Patreon. This was voted for by my patrons and we are going to be continuing with this series now until completion because I am freed of some of the... the economic concerns regarding YouTube and how many views a series gets. This is effectively a, a patron-sponsored series. So uh, just a, a quick shout out and, and again, thanks for all of the support with that. Now, in the last episode, we managed to defeat a bunch of scallywags and uh, we leveled up, in fact. Now, I believe we managed to get the skills that I had been desperately needing, and that is more healers. Previously, we only had one healer, Roskva, and Roskva now has an infection, which is actually quite worrying. A light infection. Infections are extremely dangerous in this game. Now, however, we have both myself, um, uh, Edis, and Kettle have all taken level one in healing. Now, that is going to be a pretty big thing for us in combat as well, because Everyone who can heal is an extra person who can um, increase someone's HP in the midst of combat. But additionally, during camp, we will be able to uh, heal up our people too. Uh, so we'll have more more potential doctors. Now, let me have a look. Where is the map? Let me have a look at the area. Uh, this is a clearing that we've cleared out. I believe we've already looked all the way up there. Let me just be sure of this, though. I, I think yes, yes. We have we've we've been up here. I've got a little bit turned around with the camera there, uh, but we I I've centered myself once again. So my gaming uh, sense of direction has kicked back in, which is significantly, significantly, almost almost preternaturally good compared to my real life sense of direction, which is unfortunately only good enough that. Uh, that as long as I don't get turned around, I don't get lost. If I have to walk between A and B, and A and B is a straight line, I'll probably get there. If I have to turn a corner, though, ah, uh, anyone's guess where I'll end up. Uh, right, let's have a look. But the, for some reason in games, it just doesn't really affect in the same way. Oh, that is what appears to be some sort of wolf over there. Hmm. Should we go for it? I think we should. I don't know, there's something else there too. Uh, alright, I'm down with this. Let's get into position, I've not, ooh, it, it's, it's a whole pack. Hmm. Alright, well, let's get in there. There we go. Surprise round! Ooh, there are a lot of them, mind. Uh, very well, very well. Uh, I would like... Me to fall back. Let's fall back, me. And then, take a shot. Uh, now, I have moved, so my shot is not going to be quite as good. And yeah, ab absolutely, it's, it's a wolf. Kill it. Right, can I not take the shot? Oh, no, they've got the surprise. Well, that is deeply upsetting, frankly. I, I specifically tried to get in here to have the surprise around myself. Ah, alas. Right. Roskva, I would like you with our archers, please. Um, Edis, create a line. Form a line... Yeah, we'll, we'll create a battle formation. We're just going to cluster up here. Having defense uh, like this won't matter here because I don't expect that we're going to be dealing with ranged attacks. Now, what I would like to do is have them effectively use up all of their turns just getting to us. So, no attacks this round. Also, they may block themselves. Uh, it's, a, it's a questionable one there, whether they're going to be able to block. I don't know. Oh, no, you, you did have enough. Uh, well, just... Okay, now it's time. Uh, has an attack of opportunity. How do we want to do this? Roskva, could you please... Um, well, actually, if you were ahead, you could use healing, uh, actually. Go ahead. Do a little bit of healing. Don't there worry, we go. I'm here. Good job. <laughs> the voice acting. Sometimes it's really on point. I love Roskva's voice, by the way. But at other times, ah, there's a little bit left to be desired. I will be honest. I've got a 95% chance to hit there. If I go for quick shots, I've got a 75% chance to hit. If I used a ranging shot, um, it would mean that, well, a ranging shot is free. So if I drop it there, sure. 
I'm not sure this is going to make any difference because over this kind of distance, I don't believe we've actually got any kind of uh, lowered range. Uh, range based. Oh no, we did. Really? Over on just two t tiles? Oh, I guess so. Well, oh, it could be that they're spotted, honestly, that's, that's affecting that. But either way, should be able to get both of these to land. One, and then follow that up with another one, and we're likely going to uh, take you down. There's one. Nice and easy. Alright, Kettle, you're up next. You don't need to use your ranging shot here. You're the better of our rangers so let's just go for these you you will do a little bit more damage overall there we are very nice indeed very very nice indeed uh right hmm. i'm thinking see if i take nephia up and around uh, you won't be able to get there i might be able to if i went all the way out here and around but i'm not sure how many turns you'd have uh, that's one two three four five six seven that's, that's one two three four five no I very much doubt you'd have the have the range there very well let's move in uh, now you should be able to actually I could have attacked you either way with extend I should have used the charge action too, to be perfectly honest. Regardless, we're going to see how this goes down. I can stun here if I would like to, and that might be useful. I could do a little bit of damage though, but uh, a stun would be a bit better, I think. So go for a stun. There we are, one stunned. Now, here I would like just a, a, a solid wallop here. I can even go for heavy swing. Ignores tar target's damage reduction. Damage reduction melee is only 20%, so I don't actually care too much for that. Plus, with Nephia in her current position, she can just extend a pass it and take it out. There we That's go, a critical right. hit as well. I wow. see the fear in your eyes. Very nice, Nephia. Very nice. Right, with that then, we're going to maneuver our people into a bit of a better position to block. Since that one is stunned, actually... Uh, yeah, I would actually like you to be there. And... Now, they're not going to be able to move past here. If they move into this area, although I've left uh, an opening, if anything moves there and then tries to get over there, it's going to provoke an op attack of opportunity from both people here, which is going to be quite significant. Um, Roskva, let's move you up to the front lines, where it's going to be a little bit more... Likely that you're going to be needed. Okay, I think that was a good good turn. Good first round. We've got two other larger wolves coming in for the attack. They're going to use up a lot of their movement. Wow, that was a terrible decision. Because that's effectively blocked someone who could have attacked. Now, the problem here, you are flanked. We should be able to resolve this. You're still spotted effectively. So, let's go for this then. We'll take out this wolf. There we go. And again... And the flanked has been lost. Very nice. Right, Kettle. Uh, that one's got solid cover, as does this one, which is unfortunate. Let's move over there. There we go. 95. We could do a solid attack. I can't do a quick attack now because I've already moved. So, And it requires any an entire full action to do. Uh, rebuke. No, we don't need that. Interrupt. Ah. Maybe it would depend though a little bit, but let's actually just go for this. There we go, and it's harried now, which is glorious. All right, now then, if we moved in, you might even be able to just straight up take it out, which would be fantastic, because that would allow, ah, his Leafir might have been able to get through. That would have been glorious if, if we could have made that happen. It is a shame. Oh, actually, no, no, it is down. Never mind, never mind. Uh, I'm talking rubbish. All right, let's move in. There we go. Now we've got you flanked. So there's, this is going to be absolutely brilliant. Uh, 17 armor piercing damage. I don't believe this has any armor. 6% chance to crit as well. It would have been nice to have moved in with a, a much more beefy attack. But you know what? I'm going to use up one of your stuns here. There we go. No particular reason to do that other than I wanted to. 
Uh, be perfectly honest with you. Right, let's just get in there. Uh, sure, just knife it. There we go. That was actually a solid knife one too. Right, here we are. We can smack full action smacks and a decent target for fifty percent damage, making them concussed. Um, and take one step back without incurring attack of opportunity. Or charge. Faint. Doesn't really need that. I could anticipate opening to guarantee that the next attack will be critical. That actually might be a nice one to go for. It's the attack action, and this is a full action. Uh, <laughs> let's just go for it. Womp. There we go. No matter what we did, it was going to take a full turn, I think. There we go. And... Uh, Roskva, I'm going to give you this kill. There we go. Well done. That actually went pretty well. Didn't take it. Uh, we took one hit, but we healed it immediately. All right, no new injuries. Very nice indeed. Three skill points for everyone, I believe. And let's see if we can't get some meat. Or some, some hide would be nice. A bladder, the bladder of an animal. Useful for storing liquids. Uh, there we go. And that was, that was actually a really, really decent fight. Grease. Hmm. Uh, I guess animal fat. There we are. Okay, moving on. That was... I'm quite pleased with that little combat there. Though, it does appear that someone succumbed to it. Armor oil, hardened leather. Very nice. I'm 46 valuables as well. That is none too bad. None too bad. Uh, the valuables especially, because we have spent a lot of valuables. I gave... Uh... I, I gave I gave a lot of valuables to an individual so they could they could uh, travel back to their home without having to sell his wife's armor. I I, I felt I felt uh, uh, I'll be honest I felt sorry for him. I also felt that he was honoring his wife, so it was like no I'm going to reward this behavior. The wind howls through the skeletal trees, chilling you to the bone. Darkened shapes loom ominously in the night, and the pungent stink of rotting leaves and stagnant water hangs heavy in the air. Ahead. A wavering light shines through the gloom. It wavers and flickers, its light filtering through the tree, uh, trees. Then, a large shape suddenly moves across it. Something big and misshapen. Kettle, Avak, did you see that? There's something out there. Shh, don't be ridiculous. I imagine she said, don't be ridiculous, in a very low voice. This kind of kind of betrays that, that she might not, not entirely believe what she's saying. The spirits of this marsh call dark things to the service. We tread in a realm of monsters and should watch our step. I feel that Roskva knows what she's talking about here. Listen to her, Avak. Let's come back in the morning. Oh. Oh, I like that. I like that. The idea of coming back here in the morning. Oh, that's fantastic. I approve. I do truly approve. At the same time, I kind of want to poke around a little bit. But that probably is going to be death if we do. Uh, okay. Well, it's clearly where we need to be. Uh, let's head up and around then. Let's go up and around. No, no, no. Oh, dear. Oh, I was concerned for a moment there that we had just auto pathed to, to death. Thankfully, though, no, not this time. Let's keep that engaged so I can actually see things I can interact with on the screen. There we go. What we got here? Some body in the marsh, I imagine. Yeah, there we are. Body of a young woman in the clothes of a thrall. She appears to have floated down the creek until she landed here. Ah, wait, wait. I know where we are now. I know where we are. We're towards the very north of the map at this point. Uh, yes, where we entered, we came down in that direction. Uh, we'll continue doing a little bit of scouting. So, do we believe in lantern men? We don't, right? Uh, Ghost lights of that we do. lure travelers to their doom? Old wives' tales. What? No. I've seen them sometimes, when I go into the marshes for herbs. See? No, don't encourage him. <laughs> yes, encourage him. As Leafir will also approve. Uh, I feel I feel that uh, that my character would de be deeply superstitious. Uh, all right, let's carry on. 
And so having superstitious followers, I think, is, is a benefit. Generally, you kind of want to have people who have a similar outlook on life to you because it's going to be much easier to keep them happy. It, if you've got skeptical people and then superstitious people, then there will be times where you have to pick one side or the other. And the side you don't pick is going to lose morale. The side you do pick is going to gain morale. And morale is a big, big thing in this game. It massively affects Curses. people's... Oh, what? What's wrong? Uh, I'm bomb, tar, vile, take what? all of those. What? Stepped into a hole. Now my socks are wet. <laughs> At least the hole didn't keep your boot. It's true. Or what? your leg. It happened to me once. Lost my favorite pair of boots that way. I had to borrow Lyot's boots while Darkhide made me a new pair. They were way too big for me. I, I see. I remember that. We made a lot of fun of you. That's not very yes. nice. Yes, you did. <laughs> Ketil remembers. He does not forgive. He does not forget. Uh, poor Ketil. I feel that, that as his childhood friends, we have mocked him mercilessly. Uh, let's see. Ooh, a little bit of something over here. Yes, please. Uh, take the ladder. Take the car. Uh, let's take the everything, honestly. That is empty. Cloth, honey, medicine. Ooh, good. Good, good, good. Medicine needed. Uh, let's continue on in this direction, though. Make sure we've actually uncovered everything. That's the map marker. Shows us a way... Uh, well, we interact with that in order to leave the map. It doesn't show us the way off the map. They can They don't actually have to be on the edge. I found they can actually be much uh, quite far away from the, the border of the map. As we saw in Ribe, within the, the settlement... Uh, it wasn't actually on the border. It was much much closer to the middle. Wow. Not strictly the middle, but uh, quite far away from the border itself. Okay. Hello. Uh, you may also notice, if I forget to edit it out, my recording of software does add an overlay. Um, just so I can see how long I've, I've been recording for, uh, the video FPS, that sort of thing. When transitioning on maps, some games kind of merge the different layers and the overlay will actually start to be captured. Usually it isn't. This is one game where that does happen. So if you do see any kind of weird yellow writing on the side and it kind of just all blurs because it, it does all kinds of funky graphical things when it gets merged like that, don't worry. It's not part of the game. It's just part of my recording software. Uh, right. Hello, Sandar. A small bone chime rattles as you push open the door. The interior of this house, while cosy, reveals a meagre existence, and the sweetly smell of old fish mingles with the odour of an unwashed body. A reedy voice pipes up from within the gloom. Who's there? Manny? Who is that? Ooh, Manny. Ah, right, I see. Oh, these are the people I told you about. The old man sounds pleased. Ah, you are the fine young people who saved my apprentice. I was hoping to meet you, strangers. Hmm... Uh, yeah, Manny was was part of the the group of people that we rescued from the school's men in the last episode. Uh, in the battle that we had just uh, wrapped up at the end of the episode, I believe. Anyway, uh, we were fortunate to find him. Fortunate, yes. Come, let me reward you for your good deed. The old man mumbles something to Manny, and together they rummage through the stack of junk at the back of the room. Eventually, the man reappears, carrying an armload of small, fine nets. Here, this is for you. It's a simple gift, but I made it with my own hands. I hope you'll find a use for it. Uh, we've got th three armor webbing. Nice. Once he unloads his nets on your herdmen, he shakes your hand with surprise and vigor. You have my undying gratitude, young man. You'll always be welcome in my humble home. Well, that was remarkably nice. Uh, there are various things that we can investigate here. Let's actually... Can I talk to Manny? No, I cannot. Uh, it seems that I can... I am now free to take things. I, I don't know. Uh, sometimes it, it makes me wonder about this game where it's like, yeah, this isn't stealing. This isn't stealing. But that, but that sack that's, that's like 20 meters away from the house, yeah, that totally belongs to them, and you know it belongs to them. So you're not allowed to touch them. Right. Where to now? Uh, got a little ways down here. We'll continue on our exploration. I want to make sure we've uncovered everything that there is to uncover. Ooh, a dead body. 
nope. And right, we're going back towards the area, which may be dangerous. Well, it's just over there. So as long as we avoid just walking right through the middle, we should be good. Decent amount of stuff around, though. Always worth having a poke around. Always worth it. So many things to find. Powder, water skin, very nice. Ooh. Okay, so that is where the main focus of our quest lies. But this is what I suspect we need for Nephew's sister's cure. Let's have a chat with this tree. A chat with the tree. There is no mistaking the tree the Gidya mentioned. It looks like it has stood in this place forever. Its gnarly roots protruding from the mushy soil far around. You examine the trunk and quickly find a patch of bark covered in a thick, wet mold that sticks to your fingers when you touch it. I carve off a piece of the bark. Producing your CX, you carve a jagged piece of bark off the trunk around the patch, leaving no more mold on the great old tree. Hey, give me that! Okay. Two men and a woman stand at a safe distance from your head. They wear the sort of equipment typical of farmers trained and obliged to fight in their leading their army. The short man at the front was the one who spoke. He speaks again. We need that stuff, more than you. Put it down and step away from there. Hmm. That's an interesting thing to say. What makes you think you you have a greater need than us? Our son's gravely ill, and the witch says he'll not survive the week. We need that bark to make a cure. If you won't give it willingly, we'll take it from you. The tall, densely uh, built man in the back puts a hand on a short, the shorter man's shoulders. But they're twice our number and better armed. We cannot win this. Desperation in the growl in the woman's voice. We'll win. We have no choice. That bark is my boy's only chance. Well, it might well be nephew's sister's only chance. I'm afraid that that's just the way it goes. Based on your knowledge of healing tinctures and concoctions, you're fairly confident that mold on half this bark will be more than enough to treat Euphra's illness. Now, that might actually be because of my medical skill and also my very high um, sense and perception. Uh, we need such a cure as much as you do. I won't give it up. We both face the same problem. I will split the bark with you. Nephew, no. How can we know half of the mold will suffice? My thoughts as well. I will not stake my son's life on that. Okay, well, I was offering you a way out here. If we fight, one of our loved ones will die for sure, and it's likely some of us will die here as well. If we divide the cure, there's a chance everyone will live. Um, I, I extended an offer. They refused. I'm not going to risk nephew's sister a second time. Then we will keep it all, and you can try and take it from us if you dare. Big man in the back slumps. It looks like we'll... Velag, no! The woman draws a sea axe and lunges at you, shrieking. Her husband joins her, and with a panic look in his eyes, the big guy is close behind. I feel for these people. I truly do. But I made... I made the offer, and as much as Nephew might have resisted, I made that offer in good faith. And as the leader, that responsibility lies with me. If they had accepted it when I first offered it, then I would have split it. But they refused, and that was their one chance. It's a it's a grim situation. It's it's sad that it's gonna end this way, but I have no doubt that we're gonna win. Very well. Uh they had the surprise round, which is starting to frustrate me, frankly. Now one of them has a bow, it seems. We don't want that happening. Uh, okay, let's see. I would like to move you in, force them to draw back. There we go. Nephew. Uh, Edith, where are you? Let's get you in. They aren't going to win this. We, we've we got far too strong a herd. It is a shame. My character seems certain of this. A warhound behind as well. My character did seem fairly confident that it, we would be able to share this. And I'm, I'm reasonably sure based on that. And the fact that he does have medical skill. Which Nephia does not. Um, I mean, obviously she's going to be very reluctant to potentially risk her sister's life. And I completely understand that. But I think that we could have resolved this. Uh, well. 
Alright, I would like you to move up, cattle. Roskva, stick with cattle. There we go. Now I'm going to try and keep them alive if I can. There's no sense in killing them here. Okay. Oh, drat. Oh, double drat. That's very unfortunate. Thankfully, I've got enough people here who should be able to heal her. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a ranging shot right there. That should give Kettle plenty of sight on pretty much everyone there. Now, quick shot. How likely? 80% chance to hit. 80% chance to hit. 75 there. Um, 70 there. Okay, go for him. Good shot. 49. The next one is 48 to 50. If I hit, they go down. There we are, one out. But they're writhing on the floor, they're not they're not flat up dead, which is good to see. Now Cattle, if I move you there, I'm gonna put you in, in quite a significant harm's way. However, if I move you over there, you'll have a decent shot, maybe. Uh no, we're gonna move you back here. There you go. Now you don't have uh, cripple makes a ranged attack that deals 25 damage but takes away all the target's moves on the next turn. Don't want you moving. Ah, oh, dread, I can't see you. That's a little bit of a, an annoyance, I must confess. Uh, okay, well, let's not go for that then. Let's instead move up, get some healing going. Let me help there you with we that. are. Right, Very nice. Roskva can do the same. Uh, right, I could stun you and just take you out of this, and I think that might be a good move. There we go. Right. I could move in. Likewise, actually, I could I could stun as well. I could go for a rebuke. Well, you are a bit of a concern, but I'd like to get you up there and stun them. Give me an extra round. Ah, resisted the stun. Probably because of the, the weapon they've got, actually. Thinking about it, that was a bit of a dumb move. Alright. We could go for... Move in, do a little bit more healing. Might be wise, actually. Yeah, get in there, heal. We've got, here. Oh, that Thanks was Cure. Oh, what an idiot I am. Ah. Oh, Knockdown was cured. Oh. Well. May maybe not, actually, then. May maybe maybe exactly what I wanted. Hmm. Uh, charge attack. Anticipate opening. Faint. Move to the other side of the target and make the target spend its attack of opportunity. Does it even have an attack of opportunity? Yes, it does. Uh... Is this a full action? No, it's an attack action. I'm not really sure I want to be on the other side of it, really. I could attack you all the way over there, but I don't want to extend because it will it's only 75% damage and I can still attack anyway, so. No, I'll just go for the go for the doggo. There we go. Alright, cattle, let's move you back a bit. That'll do. I think that's a good turn. Did pounce again, but thankfully you're not going to be messed up again. And once more, we're going to cure you. Get you back up. Oh, that is really useful. If all it's going to do is pounce, and all we're going to do is undo the pounce, that's going to be especially nice. Right. Now, can't hit you, but I can hit the dog twice and possibly even take it out. No, I won't be taking it out. Not this turn, at least. Bit of a shame, that one. Uh, okay. Well, I could now... Well, we've got a decent shot on you. You're flanked as well. If I go for this... 75. Aimed. 
No, I'm going to anticipate an opening and go for a, a much more hefty attack on the next turn. Right, Aegis, I would like you to stun once again. Just remove them from this combat. There we go. And... You can just take the dog out. Alright, now at this point... I would very much like you to just move up, close this gap a little bit. It's good enough there. Roskva can move in. You're not going to be able to attack on this turn, so Roskva can attack on the next. Unfortunately, you were stunned. Um, blows dust into the face of anyone occupying the three front spaces, which inflicts drugged. The three front spaces would be that, so I'd, I'd drug two of my people, which would not be exactly the best thing to do. Ouch. That is fan. Because you can probably cure stunt. Oh, a provoked attack of opportunity. I forgot about that actually. I can fix this. I mean, Thank you. Let's get uh, rid of that effect. There we go. Now then, you have a critical hit with this. Go for it. Resisted Harry. Wow, I'm actually impressed. Uh, we could just follow up, finish this with a quick shot. And then we get another quick shot of there. This is probably the it for you guys, honestly. There we are. Now, Aedis could move in with the shield hook. Pull the opponent's shield away, making them exposed. Which means they cannot block. There we are. And now with that in place, my others should be able to just wail on them. I could go for a heavy swing, ignores the tam target's damage reduction. What is your damage reduction? 29%, that's reasonable. Let's go for that. Wallop, there we go. And... Yeah, you can, you can finish him off at this point. There we go. It would have been nice to be able to share, but I may one have I may well have been able to convince them. But I I owe my support to Nephia. And as much as I was willing to give it one shot, they refused and at that point I wasn't going to force Nephia to um to, to witness me basically putting her sister's life uh, at risk for diplomacy a second time. And I felt bad enough doing it once. As much as I would have liked to have been able to avoid the, the situation where someone was all but certainly going to perish. It was quite, quite a shame. I left them alive though for what that's worth. Well, perhaps they will uh, feel a little bit worse for that. If uh, their son does die. Let's grab that. Let's see what we've got down here. Uh, grease tar and cloth. I think at this point we've been all the way around. Yes. Fury. Hmm. Okay, what we got in here? We've got a lot of things. The pile is a jumbled heap of assorted valuables. Brooches, rings, and bolts of cloth, even the odd figurine. The, they glitter invitingly in what meager light filters through the filthy windows. Catalyze the pile. Would you look at that? Wipe the saliva from your mouth. These must belong to the people who disappeared in the marsh. If they come back, they'll notice it's missing. Um, steal it. It won't do anyone good here. I say we take it. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Well, I'm not sure. It could be the the people who've been disappearing, I strongly suspect, are dead. So, no, I'm going to take it. There we are. Gained si 60 salvage and 900 valuables. Wow. Take the hides. And that's it for this room. Actually, no, it's not. I just noticed this as I was leaving. 40 more valuables. Fantastic. Okay, now that's it for this room. Alright, well, that's pretty much explored everything. We could go to the campaign map, 
and camp for a little bit, or we could try and deal with these guys, but uh, i got a funny feeling. Given these massive hounds they've got, they are significantly taller than we are, I think. Uh, maybe. Uh, at any rate, let's go ahead and leave, I think. We'll head out, camp for a little bit, and see what we can do. Uh, they look quite burly. Right, we want a camp that's reasonably close by. Low food, normal shelter, very high security. Very high food, normal shelter, and high security. Four hours, five hours. All right, we're going to make our way to the camp over here. Uh, yes, I would like to leave the campaign map. Okay. All right, who eats first? The weakest, I think. Uh, assign all meat to your followers, then switch to rations. Assign rations to all followers, then... Uh, all followers until supplies run out. Uh, no, no, no. So, we've got hunting. We've got all sorts of things going on, actually. All right, Roskva. I would like... Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do healing. I would like to heal Roskva. Uh, there we are. It's a light infection. So we might actually be able to, to save her with that. Then, go ahead and hunt. Should be enough. Uh, Roskva, can I get you doing anything? I can get you doing a bit of witchcraft. Then, preserving. Now, I believe that everyone in my area here, I don't think anyone actually needs uh, more than one hour of sleep. Which is great. Go ahead and heal Rasper. The injury has already been assigned to fully be fully treated in the camp. Fantastic. And I would like you to hunt in that case. Get us even more hunting going on. Uh, other than that, I think we're solid. Unless you can do preserving. No, you can't, which is a shame. If I had you preserve and then rest... I could possibly have you clean at the end and just have... Well, it takes a little bit out of our... Uh, let's have you guard and then rest there. It's not the best thing for us, but it's also not terrible. Unless... Actually, if I swap these around... Rest at the beginning. Actually, that might be enough that I don't need to do this at all. Yeah, I don't need to do that at all. I'll just hunt instead, get some more meat coming in. All right, I think that is a solid uh, bit of time there. Preserving witchcraft. Okay, and make camp. Lost seven rations. Seem to have done a pretty good thing there. Oh, someone awoke tired. I've eaten. One of your herdmen has become fatigued. Your scouts have found something of interest nearby. We gained one ration. We did not consume nor preserve nine meat. And the first ship, Roskva, made three medicine from the herbs. In the first ship, Avak used nine medicine to treat an injury. In the third shift, Roskva made three medicine from herbs. We lost a bunch of herbs overall. But there we go. That was a decent night's sleep there. The one person clearly hasn't got the, uh, the ability to um, rest up properly, which is a bit of a shame, honestly. Uh, scouted area. Sure. Enter this area. I don't know what's there. As you make your way through the woods, the sounds of voices bickering reach reach you. Oh, it was me. Oh, that's terrible. Look trees used by a trio having a heated debate. One short, one burly, and one fat. The short, red-haired one scratches at his braided beard. Erikir, I told you we should have turned left at the runestone and followed the north shore of the lake. The burly one peers at him beneath bushy blonde eyebrows. Right. No, left! Now we're lost! Again! The fat one pulls his finger from his nose and spots you as he does so. He calls out a warning, though his accent is so thick it's utterly unintelligible. You assume he's from somewhere in the vast reaches east of Svealand. Show yourself or face the tip of my sword! Uh, sure, I'll, I'll show myself. I am Avak, son of Bjorn. Unfortunately, my perception is really low. Travellers as well, eh? We're bound from Rebay, but seems to have gotten, uh... Lost? The fat one mutters into his sumptuous blonde beard. You think he's expressing shame? Um, I could give him directions. 
It takes a while to explain, but it eventually becomes clear that the constant bickering, terrible sense of direction, and a string of misfortunes are to blame for most of their trouble. Nevertheless, you manage to hammer an ironclad, uh, in ironclad directions to town. We're in luck, lads! And you, you've done us a great favour. We'd be happy to share a beer, and the tale of how we got here is thanks. Uh, hmm. No, I'm not going to turn down a beer. You settle in and listen as they weave a tale too wild to be believed, though the beer helps. You are certain that by the end of it, they're just making it up as they go. Nevertheless, it has been an engross it, it has been engrossing, and when you take your leave, you find the hour much later than anticipated. Oh, right, okay. Well, not quite what I wanted. 19 wood. A, a pit trap? My lord. Now, let's get back. So, for me, a decent amount of sleep then. For everyone else, a decent amount of food preparation, I would say. Uh, yeah, that actually seems like a very good setup there. We've got four SP to spend, five there. It's not enough to really do anything right now. I wouldn't say... Oh, actually, you've got a huge hulking amount to spend. Well, well, well. I approve. Sincerely, I do. Uh, we don't... I could go for anticipate opening. Yeah, I really, really like the ability to do that. So, we'll grab that one. Do I need to give you any more on your Dane Axe? I can't even if I want to. So that's fine. Uh, I could get your repairing skill up a little bit. But I think I'm going to keep it for combat, honestly. For now, at least. We'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes. Thick skin, increase the physical resistance by 10 percent points. That actually is not a bad one. Most of these are way too expensive. Sneak attacks, steady hands, interrupt attacks have a 100% chance. That would actually be quite nice, I'll be honest. Uh, let's see. Quick feet, move around an enemy without incurring attacks of opportunity. Now that one is quite useful. It would allow me to um, reposition quite well. I think we're going to go with opportunist. So any attacks of opportunity you make will stun the target, that's actually really nice, because I can merge that with taunting to force people to try and move out of, of a fight, and thus effectively um, damage themselves by doing so. Mm, do I want you to repair anything? I kind of think I do. Let's have a look. Uh, we can repair a lot of things. It'll take me a little bit of salvage to do this one. Select all. Oh, my lord. It's quite a lot of salvage, actually. Uh... So go ahead and do as much repairing as you can. That does take a lot out of our guarding, though. Um, now, if you, I need you to guard here so that I can switch around the guard spots. There we go. That's a bit better. And make camp. Guarding just ensures that we keep the security nice and high on this area. There we are. Go ahead. We have, unfortunately, lost quite a lot of rations there. Now, no one is fatigued, which is amazing. We lost 26 salvage. Um, we didn't manage to produce one meat, but we gained rations, we gained medicine, and that is something I am extremely happy with. All right, then. Now, we're going to be heading back to the swamp, the marsh, rather, and it's going to be the last thing that we do. What's that? Sunrise. There we go. It is going to be daytime when we enter. Uh, no, 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 no. Are you sure you're leaving the campaign map and enter the forest clear? No, 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 we want to be there. Go. There. Ah, marvelous. Right, you're in different hesitant. Uh, we are definitely bringing... I mm, could bring Gunnar here instead of Edis. Although Edis does have stun, Edis does uh, also has the ability to heal. I think, yeah, Gunnar, you're going to be coming along with us for this one. Those look like quite quite burly individuals, and I would like a burly herdsman to back us up as we walk in. Okay, here we are. We have arrived, and now all that really remains for us is to go and deal with the monsters in the marshes. Now, what do we what do we know about them? They look gigantic, and they've got two gigantic hounds as well. Uh, which direction would be better to approach from? This one over here, or maybe there's not much cover there, to be honest. Uh, let's approach from this side, actually. 
Now, as I was saying, uh, we know that they got two giant hounds and they are massive. And also they had all of this wealth there. People have been dying, or, or rather, at the very least, they've been going missing in the marshes. So my guess is that these fellows have been killing them and keeping their valuables. Uh, right, let's go and see what's going on then. Uh, we can just straight up attack. No, we're not going to straight up attack. We're going to at least see what's going on. Three hunched shapes sit huddled around a roaring fi fire pit. They are unnaturally large, and their features hideously misshapen. Roscoe pales, her voice a trembling whisper. Giants. Gunnar's grin is fierce, and you can almost hear his meaty uh, fists clench around the haft of his weapon. Giants! I, I like their different approach. He's like, one is like, giants, and the other is just roaring, almost in challenge. The largest among them points towards you. Look at this, brothers! Little people drawn to our fire. Lost in the woods on a dark, a dark night. Uh, it's actually sunrise. Uh, die freaks. No. Hey, Loxal, it is awfully cold tonight. Might we share your fire? Uh, I don't think we need to. See, I have learned from the previous one. If I'm fairly certain that, that, that something is up, I should probably act decisively. Otherwise, I lose the opportunity. Uh, hmm. Well, this is going to continue it, or I could just straight up attack. I'm not willing to jump to this one yet, but th this, maybe I'm going to regret it, but uh, you've been taking people and hoarding their belongings. I'm going to accuse them. Toll for passing our land, their goods and their lives. Men come here, call us monsters. They bring swords and fire. A sick grin distorts his face. So we take them, kill them first. Now they leave us alone. You should have left us alone too. Now we will have to take you. Okay, well, that is unfortunate. We have again lost the element of spread. Ah, damn it. Less talky, more shooty, apparently, is the way of this game. Um, sure, let's draw back. Raskva, you can come back, stand between. That way you can apply your um, poison. Uh, is Leaf Fair hold this area? There's only one approach and you've got a shield. You've got some cover, good. And I would like... Hmm. Gunnar, since you've got a decent uh, attack now, a uh, decent uh, chance to stun... Hmm. And Nefia, let's not allow Gunara to be flanked. I think that's a good enough position. Now, the hounds are probably going to take an entire turn to get down there and not be able to attack. You might be able to attack on this turn, though. Yes, you can. Ooh, that hurt. But you're the only one that's going to be able to attack unless you can reach. No. Oh, thank goodness. All right, you're going to be going down here. Okay, you went straight past the shield. Well, that shield was useless, wasn't it? Okay, now you're going around behind. That is worrisome. All right, Roskva, I would like you to envenom Kettle's attacks. There we go. Fantastic. Now, Kettle, I would like you to go for a ranging shot here. And then quick shots. Your attacks are going to be poisoned. Uh, should we go for the main attack? Is 91% chance. 95% chance. Go for it. There we are. That's one poison applied. And, well, actually, you'd almost bring that one to death. No, go for the other. I feel that they're going to be the, the ones that are going to be in this fight for the longest. So poisoning them, uh, poisoning them early seems to be a smarter move. All right, go now. How are we going to deal with this one? Look and slash. Charge. Rebuke. Um, might actually die on the next turn if I'm lucky. Go for it. There we are. In fact, I could have you taunt someone. It takes my attack action though, which is none too great. But that would pull him in and then he would possibly... 
have to deal with uh, the counterattack, which actually would be quite nice. Uh, first, you could take him out. Or you could take this one down. Hmm. And we take a step back, but you wouldn't kill. It might die on their own, though. But if we just go for a regular attack, we're going to kill them. So uh, that's a bit of a shame, actually, in a way. Uh, it's a difficult one. Go for it. There we go. Spread out this damage a bit. Now, I do need to get you healed. Uh, let's see. Healing. It's not a great deal, but it's enough that you could take another hit like that without going down. As for you... We could stun this dog, take it out of the fight, or I could... Go for... Take you out of this fight. I, that might be a good idea, honestly. As much as it would allow you to move through. Or I could continue blocking... You know what? I'm going to continue blocking this area. Let's taunt you. Come this way, you. You're going you're gonna to come through? Is he going to get a, an attack of opportunity? Yes. Perfect. There we go. And you're bloodthirsty, which is glorious. Now then. That means that we have at least removed one. And we've got our defenders in the right place still. I would like you to move... Back down here. Gonna, I can't move you because of attack of opportunity, and I can't move you, I don't think. Can I see? Yeah, they've all got attacks of opportunity there. Moskva, you've actually got a shield, so in an odd way, you're one of the better characters to be at the front. Alright, and turn. See how this goes. Ooh, a stun. Well, that's actually not too bad. The block absorbed a good hit there. Not too much damage. And how are you going to approach? Okay, attack of opportunity. All right. Uh, the block took a lot. Ooh, okay. Oh, drat. Two people down. That did not go the way I was hoping it would. I'll be honest. All right. We can take you out. I, I could take them out too. Um, I'll take out the hound. Shit one down. I can follow up with a quick attack if Roskva gives me poison. Actually, if Roskva can get around, she can cure that problem. Yeah. Let's go, Roskva. Let's use cure. It'll bring them out of stun. Uh, attack of opportunity, but I should have moved over there. That's Thank a bit of a pain. I'm going to have to remember that that's an attack of opportunity um, action. Or rather, it provokes attacks of opportunity. Right, what I would love from you is a counter stun. But you've got your shield up, which is actually a little bit of an issue. Uh, hmm. Well, how good of a chance have I got to hit? Not a good one at all, actually. Let's drop my ranging arrow here. See if I can't increase that chance. If I can remove your shield with these attacks, that would be great. Just quick shots. Block deflected. Wow, okay. And again. Twice. Did I do no damage as a result of that? That is so annoying. Okay, just go for regular attack then, I guess. Uh, kick that moves the target one hex away. I'm not going to be able to do that right now. Go for it. To be oh wow! In that was actually quite a reasonable attack. I'll be honest, I'm quite impressed. Uh, heavy swing ignores damage reduction. And go for it. That's annoying. I should have kept the uh, quick attacks, and that would have been so much better. I was really hoping that would take out the block, but. Cattle, move away from there, because right now you're not doing much in the way of damage. Uh, we could do this. It would drug both of you, though. It's not exactly the best position here. Move up. Give him someone else to attack. Let's see how this goes. Stunned. 
And unbalanced. That's okay. That's not too terribly bad. Oh, that is. Almost. That is almost terrible. You're both bleeding out a little bit. Okay, right. Kettle, need your quick attacks. Oh, uh, I need to swap the weapon. There we go. Quick attacks on both. You can take them out. or Well, they've no longer got a block, so you can actually take that one down straight up. There we go. And over there just to remove you. There we are. I will follow up as well with quick attacks now that you're actually... Your shield is gone. And... We're going to manage this, but this was not a particularly good engagement, I'm going to be honest. I feel that we could have and should have done much better than this. There we go. And we win. Alright, let's have a look. I don't think anyone's going to have had an injury as a result of this. No. Good times. Alright, now we need to head back and report to uh, the Jarl that we have dealt with these problems. Ooh. Very nice shield. A very, very nice shield there. What else do we have? Uh, let's see. Taj, various odds and sods around here. Howling Witch. Have they all got special items? Oh, that's fantastic. Oh my lord, they did. Well, well, well. Okay, let's have a quick look at what we've got there. I didn't have a proper look. Now, the best person to have a shield would be you. Since that is your bread and butter. Um, so, Spear Wall. Let's have a look at this one. This sturdy pine shield is noticeably larger than most shields you've seen. You got it from the body of Duiri, the youngest of the monstrous brothers who had been terrorizing the marshes near Ribe. It's better absorption by far, much better block chance and physical resistance. Plus, when next to an ally, an extra 10% block chance. That's huge. Yes, we'll, we'll have that. Thank you. Uh, that means maybe this shield is better than yours now. It is, actually. Uh, Alright, no, let's swap that around. Uh, damn it. Can I not see it? I don't know. What's this one then? 52. Well, it is better. So, we'll go with that. 5. Well, actually, that's got a tiny bit better uh, block chance. And a bit better physical, but... Uh, that's fine for now. Seems strange that I can't actually swap those around. Right. The only person who's any good with an axe. This is a Dane axe. This is just a regular axe. So I could just straight up change your axes. There we go. That is amazing. Let's, uh, let's actually swap those around again. So this one is plus 16 minimum and plus 18 maximum. That's huge. Uh, the AP is plus 5. The crit is better and plus ten percent damage versus uninjured. And then your Dane axe. Uh, this is seven to twelve to one point one. This is ridiculously higher. My goodness, and ten percent damage versus immobilized. Well, now that was a big upgrade for us. I am extremely pleased with that. Have we got many skills? Um, no, not there. There or there or there. Uh, you could. And uh, maybe you could too, actually. Uh, not that one, though. Uh, let's have a look. Do we have anything we, think we really want? Mm -mm. Powerful kick. Rebuke will also apply knockdown status to an effective target. That's actually pretty cool for those who've got uh, that. That would actually be quite a nice one. Uh, steady hands. Interrupt attacks have a 100% chance to hit. Now, you see, this one might be nice because we can have interrupt attacks with our bow. And if they've got a 100% hit chance, oh, that's going to be... I wonder if that, that'll work that way. You know what? Six skill points, I think is it's worth it to for science that. Now, you've got seven points to spend. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, opportunist... Attacks of opportunity will also apply the stunned status effect to the target. Might be nice. Yeah, okay. We're going to upgrade to that. 
And there we are. That is it for this episode. I really do hope you've enjoyed and will be joining me in the next. Well, we're going to be returning to Rebay. I know we've got to make our way down to get some treasure, but I think that saving Nephew's sister's life has to take priority. Plus, you know, we've got a good couple of thousand valuables. It's not like we're going trading anyway, so it's not that big of a deal for us. I think the, the main focus for us is going to be on just making sure that we get as much as we can in the time that we have, but also taking care of, of our... Um, of our town before we actually leave and that includes taking care of all the people in it but that is going to be it from me so thank you very much for joining me i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next time but until then do take care